Okay, it looks like it's going to come through any minute. If you're live, let us know that you can see and hear us. There we go. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for waiting. I really apologize. I had uh, just AV problems for some random reason. But we're here now, and that's great. So hello and welcome. This is Michelle Christensen of One Note Worthy Life, and this is episode 16 of the Take Note Chat. And I'm really excited for today's guest. Um, our guest is Melissa Garner, and she is an expert in educational technology, or ed tech for short. And she's also heading up a web accessibility program um, for um, the educational um, state where she works. Um, today, Melissa is going to show us a nearly seamless way to integrate your analog and digital notebooks by using Rocketbook and OneNote together. Um, we're we're going to be taking questions and comments. If you're joining us live, you can just add your questions and comments in the YouTube chat box next to the video. And if you're catching this on replay, you can add questions and comments in the um, comment section, and then Melissa can answer them later. You can also post your share about this event using the hashtag TakeNoteChat. So before I introduce Melissa, I just wanted to see if anyone watching live uses Rocketbook. So if you do, um, go ahead and drop that in the comments and tell us what, uh, how you use it and what digital storage tool you use it with. Um, now, let me tell you about today's guest. So Melissa is really passionate about personality theory and its application to relationships. And this will be really important and interesting later. She's a teacher in her community and believes that love is the most important, is more important than anything else. Currently, she's the accessibility lead for her state's Department of Education, and she is also a leukemia survivor. Yay! Yay. <laughs> So awesome. Welcome, Melissa. Thanks, Michelle. I'm glad we made this work today. Yes, yes. Um, and thank you for calming me down when I was having tech issues. No worries. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So people can see in here. That's awesome. And Denise uh, Vidoc, she's an awesome OneNote user, very supportive community member. She's here. Yay. Um, so, all right. Um, so I wanted to have Melissa present on this topic of Rocketbook and OneNote because it's certainly true that digital note taking has many advantages, um, but a lot of people still want the analog experience of taking note by hand and filling up notebooks. Now there's some other ways to do this, like you can use a device with a stylus or you can scan your paper pages, but Rocketbook has some features that these options lack. And the other reason I thought this would be a great topic is because the only other time I've seen this presented was at the Learn OneNote Conference 2018. And out of about 25 OneNote-centered talks, this was one of the ones that got the most comments. So people were really interested in this. And if you don't know me, I'm Michelle Christensen. Um, I host the largest OneNote group on Facebook, which is the OneNote Bullet Journal group. And I've been hosting, co-hosting um, the Take Note chat since early 2018. So I'm going to go ahead and check the chat real quick, and then we'll jump into our content. Oh, okay. So Sarah just ordered one and planning to use it with OneNote. Fingers crossed. That's awesome, Sarah. I think you're going to love today's presentation. And you're going to love your rocket book too. Ah, that's great. Um, okay. So let's get started. So first off, uh, Melissa, what is rocket book? Well, let me start a screen share. Okay. And I'm going to go for an application window and that one. So I have three rocket books. Actually, technically I have four. Um, rocket book is a physical notebook that comes in three different sizes. Those sizes are this one, which is roughly a letter size notebook. This is an executive size notebook and this is a memo size notebook. And this picture shows their size in relation to an, one another. Um, so they have, just uh, 36 pages in them actually of blank notebook. That's all they are on the inside. When you're using rocket books, you use friction pens. They are pens that are specifically designed to erase. They also disappear in high heat. 
Um, so don't sign your checks with them. I have a friend who did that once and had to go put all of the checks in the freezer to bring the ink back. So um, this is what a marker, a single marker and a single ballpoint pen look like. And then down here, I crocheted my, I, I love using color. I love using color. And so I crocheted myself a, a holder to be able to lay all my pens out at once and be able to use them anytime I wanted to. You clean your pages using a damp microfiber cloth. So once you're done with the page and you have used the app to record it, you get your microfiber cloth wet, wipe down the page, uh, dry it, and it's ready to go again. So it's an endlessly reusable notebook. Um, that is really cool. And just to be clear, the, pa the pages are paper, right? Yes, they are paper, but they are slick mm -hmm. to the touch. So, um, yeah, it, it, I almost always, if I'm in person with someone, I make sure that they touch the pages because they have a very different feel than paper, the traditional paper that we're used to. Um, yeah, but that's, I, I just wanted to underscore that even though this is like a sort of techie solution, these are actually mm -hmm. paper. Um, and how about that, um, pay, how about your pens, your pen holder there? So anyone that's watching yep. this, if you are a stationary or pen junkie, like, does that mm -hmm. just, you know, tickle you or what? <laughs> that's amazing. Um, and I get all kinds of comments on it. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's really great. Um, and that right, rolled so, up so that it's all, wow. I mean, it, it's in a circle about this big that I use. Wow. Okay. That's really cool. So in short, rocket books are paper notebooks, 36 pages. You can uh, write on them and wipe them clean with a damp mm -hmm. micro microfiber cloth. Um, so it's like, you know, one notebook, you use it for the rest of your life. Yeah. Okay. And so the way that works is at the bottom of each page, there are a handful of symbols that you can use. And each of those symbols corresponds to a destination that you set up using the Rocketbook app. So in this picture, you can see all the different destinations that a Rocketbook can use. So OneNote is right here in the middle of the list. Um, almost all of my destinations are OneNote destinations. And inside of the configuration for that particular destination, I can set a destination path. Um, and those paths can be different from one another. So I have destinations for my work fo focused rocket books, a personal focused rocket book, and then a bullet journaling rocket book. Oh, that's really neat. That's new to me that not only can you send it to OneNote, but you can send it to a specific place within OneNote. Yeah. And so if I mark um, personally, if I mark this one right here, that's mm -hmm. my personal OneNote. And this one down here is my bullet journaling page. So um, they, it, the pages automatically go to the right part of my life, as I like to call it, because I use OneNote for everything under the sun. Yeah. So uh, once you have finished filling out a page, writing on it, whatever, you use mm -hmm. the app to take a picture and then the app Correct. recognizes this little uh, symbol at the bottom and sends it to the yep. correct page. Yeah, and in combination with a QR, this QR code knows, lets Rocketbook know that it's a Rocketbook. Mm -hmm. And then this symbol does not copy this, and these marks don't show up on the page that is captured. It is only telling the app where to send it once you've, can, once you've snapped it with the app. Yeah, so that's great. And then I would assume like if just in the event that someone wanted to use something other than OneNote, like, like Dropbox or Google, mm -hmm. Pete, you know, Google Drive or whatever, you could configure it as well. Correct. Okay. You can you can text it to someone, <laughs> but really anything wow. that you want to do. That is amazing. I, you, like I didn't, yeah. like, I kind of knew the basics, but I didn't realize how, you know, it just seems really well designed and useful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, My favorite new thing that they've got going on that they just added into the app a couple of weeks ago is that you can buy markers for the corner of a whiteboard that turns it into a rocket book, essentially. So you can use the rocket book app to snap a picture of any whiteboard in the world oh and God. file it with the same things that you use. Whatever you've already got configured in the app, you can send it to any of those destinations. Oh, that's really cool. Um, I don't remember specifically if it was that or... A, a different way, but the person that presented on it um, during the Learn OneNote conference, he described having, I think it was like a whiteboard painted wall in his house that he used and sent it to, you know, used it, used it with Rocketbook. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You could do, certainly do that. Wow. Yeah. 
Um, so that is all really cool. Let me just check the chat and make sure everyone is, yeah, okay, so no questions so far. Everyone is with us, and I think that was a really good overview. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here is our big question. We, uh, if, if somebody wants to integrate analog and digital, what are the advantages of this solution over some of the others? So for me, the big advantages are these. Um, first, it's reusable. Uh, those 36 pages will last me literally for the rest of my life as long as I take care of my rocket book well. Don't lose it, you know, one of those sorts of things. Don't mark it with a permanent marker that you don't want to yeah. do, which I've done. Um, it's entirely analog, which means that I can walk into any location in the world and not have people look at me a little odd, like, why are you using your phone or why are you using, why are you packing around a computer with you everywhere? Um, and that analog has a completely different feeling. You know, there's research that says you remember better when you write than when you type. And so being able to be analog for me is really important. Um, it's portable. I don't have to have haul a computer bag around with me everywhere. I just grab whichever size is appropriate for the situation I'm headed into. Um, I typically use my letter size notebooks if I'm going to a talk or a lecture. I use my executive notebook for when I'm headed to meetings, just regular day-to-day -day sort of stuff. That's the one that goes with me everywhere. And then I keep the little one in my purse for all those times when you really wish you had a piece of paper and then could store it someplace where you could get to it later. And color changes. Um, if you're looking at my OneNote, I've got the color change wheel up on my Quick Access toolbar, and it's still not fast enough. So I'd prefer to pack around my, my custom designed pen holder and just access color at the drop of a hat. Yeah, and those are all really big, you know. Um, as far as it being reusable, when, uh, when I was using paper, I had this sense of, um, you know, you're, you're, you know, consuming a renew a resource and, mm -hmm. um, you know, so there was always that on my mind. And then when I created notebooks, um, I would always think like, I'm going to store this stuff and, you know, hopefully I have many decades on this planet and it's like, what am I going to have just boxes and boxes right. of old notebooks? And so that kind of bugged me. Um, yeah, so I really like the reusable part. And then, you know, uh, we were talking about how with analog, there are certain settings where it's just, um, I think a little bit nicer, a little bit more um, in keeping with the surroundings if to go analog, like if you're hanging out with a friend or, um, you know, uh, I don't know, just there's certain settings yep. where it just makes more sense, like in a doctor's office or something, you don't want to be typing on your laptop. And I personally find that if I'm out and about, like if I'm with people, if I'm, at, you know, in a social setting, even if I go to make a quick note on my phone and I have the um, OneNote badge on my phone, it floats. And so I can do it pretty quick. I just tap the badge and make a note. It still takes me out of my surroundings. Now, mm -hmm. instead of being like in my surroundings, I'm on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a paper notebook does that. You just whip it out and you're sort of, it doesn't have that same effect of you know, taking you out of your surroundings, what I, which I like. And it's less precise. So if you're on your phone and trying to type, you have to be very careful about what you're touching on the keyboard. Um, you grab a piece of paper and a pen and you don't have to reference the surface that you're using to be able to take notes. Yeah, that's a really good point too. It's like, if you have a, a quick idea, you know, a lot of times, especially with a phone, um, you know, I'm a little, not a great typer on my phone and it's, mm -hmm. you know, then you're like spell checking yourself and things like that. Whereas, you know, with paper, you can get it right on the first try. So that's a really good point too. Um, you know, and then you mentioned the portability, you know, so we start, we're talking a little bit about the portability. And one of the things I asked Melissa was, uh, okay, so how light, if you're ca carrying a notebook, what's the lightest you could travel? Like if you're going to a festival or something, mm -hmm. and you kind of reference that, but. Yeah, so that little tiny notebook mm -hmm. um, is one that I carry in my purse and all I need that is a, and a friction pen. Uh, and really I could put that into a little tiny sling bag Mm -hmm. You know, I carry my wallet, my phone, my little rock book and a pen, and that's as light as I need to go. Yeah. And I mean, that's pretty small, you know, like mm -hmm. if you're just carrying your phone, you're talking about, a, you know, a purse this size. So that's, yep. that's great. And then I also like the comment you made about color and you had all those beautiful pens. Um, 
because you can change. I think you mentioned you change from week to week and a lot of people use color coding and there's something about color that makes it just a little bit more visually appealing and yep. we're maybe more likely to go into our pages or look at what you've written down mm -hmm. if you can use a little color. So I like yep. that as well. And yeah, this week's colors are red and red. <laughs> and I thought it was interesting that you mentioned uh, that the surface machine just, even though you can change color, mm -hmm. it just, um, isn't quick or seamless. It's the way not Robin fast. Is. Yeah. 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 It's an extra four or five clicks. Yeah. So, uh, oh, okay. We got a question here. Mm -hmm. Um, Denise, Denise Vidak wants to know how do the pages hold up after repeated use? Uh, whiteboards get like, for example, you know, in other words, mm -hmm. whiteboards get dirty fast. Do the pages clean up? Well, the pages clean up very well. Um, and we'll get to this a little bit later, but some of my bullet journaling pages are looking pretty worn. Mm -hmm. where I write at this every single day I write in the same place. Um, and they look a little worn, but they still work great. They still clean up appropriately. Um, it just, uh, and, and even when I snap a picture of the, or when I use the rocket book app to grab that, it doesn't show any shading in the background. So it's not going to pick up all of that little bits and pieces of, um, that I see with my eyes, the app doesn't see. Oh, that's kind of neat that even, you know, if your page gets a little bit, you know, rough or whatever, that the app mm -hmm. doesn't show that. So when you keep right. your final copy, your final copy is clean. That's like an added, you know, benefit. Yep. So that's very cool. Um, so that was the only question. I think we are ready to go to the next session section, which is where uh, Melissa is going to show us kind of some next level tips for using these two tools together. Yeah, so I want to give you a little bit of context. So when I was using, before I got to Rocketbook, I had um, spreads like this that I'd laid out in one note ahead of time, and this is what they looked like when they were full. So I had several favorite themes that I used over the course of time, and I'd used, used and reused them. And I got this email from Rocketbook that included this. Um, this is a link to a YouTube video. And in it, they very simply describe how you might use a Sharpie on a rocket book and create a permanent frame for what you're using. They did for just a calendar blank. Would you like to have a blank calendar that you could fill in every month and reuse? And I, because I have been using my Surface and a pen to do bullet journaling for a long time, I just immediately went to, oh my gosh, I could do all of my bullet journaling in a rocket book. So I sat down and um, I did, I measured out how big a rocket book page used my surface to do all of the work of what's going to fit on a page. How would I make that work? I laid out all of my favorite spreads in rough form. Um, and at one point I've worked with somebody else to lay out a very specific layout that they wanted to do. And what I ended up with are these. So this is the this is an actual rocket book snap in OneNote. This is exactly how it looks when it comes in. And this is my January 2019 calendar. You notice there's a little spot right here that is um, the blank spot where that QR code is on this page, but it doesn't pick up those little characters at the bottom. So this is the hack that they talk about in the video. How do you make this blank calendar? So all the color ink you see, the pink, the purple, the dark blue, that is all friction ink and it's erasable. The black lines on this page are in Sharpie and they are permanent. So when I go to make a new calendar, the background, the Sharpie lines stay there, but I can change what goes on the page and the colors that I use and all that kind of good stuff. So I have some more examples. So this is what a completed weekly spread looks like. So that's one of those things that I, one of those layouts that I created. Um, whoops. This is the week that I got to go meet the guy that donated his stem cells to save my life. His name's Jake. He's awesome. Um, so it has all those things that were related to travel. This is just a hint to dry your pages. If you look at this Rocketbook page, which is actually not taken with a Rocketbook app, but with a camera on my phone, 
you're going to notice in here i've got all these these lines that are kind of here and that's because i didn't dry my pages thoroughly in between uh before i shut the book so if you've got sharpie on both sides of a page and you shut your rocket book uh, and you don't have it dry the sharpie will transfer from one page to the other but again in the rocket book app does not pick up those little tiny lines in the background it's just annoying for me as a human being looking at it so that was good news um that's another of my spreads and that's the final one so that's what rocket book looks like wow in, in that's what bullet journaling looks like with a rocket book using the hack and one note um that is that was really cool i mean all of those pages are just so like incredible and um if anyone's interested the link to that video is in the description of this video um one of the things i've been i i like to watch a lot of the new uh planners that are being developed because they all have unique approaches and sometimes mm -hmm. there's something in there like um yep that will box in your thinking. Like one of the ones I was looking at recently has like today's top three items I must get done. And I'm like, oh, I wanna add that to my daily page. And while the rocket book is very free form because it's paper, you can kind of write all over it mm -hmm. by being able to have this structure, you can kind of teach yourself or, or, or train your brain or make yourself think a, cer a certain way. Yep. Um, and it just, you know, you can basically create your own reusable planner spread however mm -hmm. you want. And it just is there for you forever. Yeah. And that's one of the advantage of having done bullet journaling on my surface ahead of time. I did not walk into this and go, huh, I wonder how this layout would work or I wonder what I could do with this. Um, I had all that worked out and was ready to commit mm -hmm. <laughs> to yeah. permanent ink. Ah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you do get 36 pages, so you get, yep. you know, you'll have quite a few tries if you mess something up. So, yep, exactly. Um, yeah, so I, I just think that's incredible. And I loved seeing all of the, the, the different spreads you can do that, you know, you can do a lot of different things with it. And then when you use the colored ink, it shows this is the framework, this is the ink, which is really yep. fun. Yep. Um, so, okay, and you gave us your pro tip, which is to make sure if you do use the Sharpie to make a permanent page, it's make sure it's completely dry. So that's yes. awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let me just check the chat, make sure we have no questions. Nope, we're good on questions. So Melissa's a teacher, you know, which we can kind of see because she's very thorough and very clear and, you know. Um, so your next tip has something to do with personality theory. So um, just so we're all clear, can you briefly explain what personality theory is? Yeah, so personality theory is a group of systems of thinking about how to classify people. Uh, in my world, that is not classification. So I can put you in a box and make you behave a certain way because that's how you got you defined yourself. Um, for me, it really comes down to understanding who you are so I can better relate to you. So whatever personality theory I'm using, some of those uh, Myers-Briggs um, or type is one of those theories. Enneagram is another of those theories. Strengths Finder is another of those theories. All of those things to me are just ways for me to better communicate with you rather than expecting you to understand me and talk like I want to hear. Um, you know what? Hang on. I'm just, that's such a like a, a golden gem. I wanted to put that in the chat that personality theory helps me understand you so I can relate better to you. That was really good. Um, and, you know, I have personally found uh, personality theory to be really helpful in my own life. Um, I have, I've had some exposure to it. And, you know, when you have that framework, it's like you sometimes you can spot that in another person mm -hmm. and you can say, oh, there are such and such. So the best way for me to relate to that person is by this. And it just it makes such a difference to have better communication and deeper communication. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like. For, I'm an introvert, and so uh, talking to someone who is extroverted it lets me um, let let them off the hook for having to have their final answer when I start talking. Um, so since I know that they need to talk to think, I can give them the grace to not come to a conclusion until five minutes into the conversation, and then go with what they say. You know, that's so funny. I hadn't planned it to, di you know, diverge in this way, right, but it's just yes. funny you made this comment because I, I too am an introvert. And I mean that in the Myers-Briggs sense, meaning yep. um, 
Yep. So I'm not shy. I'm not, you know, um, socially, you know, uh, uh, anxious or whatever. It has to do more with like, I tend to process more internally so that when mm -hmm. I speak, it comes out more complete. Whereas at least one of the differences anyways, extroverts process by talking. Mm -hmm. And I had a boss once who, um, he was a new boss at the time and we'd be working on a problem and we'd be, he would talk and then I would go to start talking and he would interrupt me. And it was so irritating. I was like, oh my God, this guy interrupts me all the time. How am I ever going to work with this person? And then just happened to be right at the time I read the Myers-Briggs um, theory. And I realized that I was actually interrupting him because he was processing and thinking while he was talking and I jumped in prematurely. And the one simple change I made was I sat there and listened very intently, no matter how many times he paused or stopped. And when he was done, he would say, oh, okay, well, what do you think? And then I knew it was my turn to talk and it made all the difference in the world. And it ended up being a really fruitful and um, productive relationship. Yep. And that is a great hack. Yeah. As for living as an introvert. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, so that, that was kind of just explaining like a little bit about personality theory because it, it ties into um, Melissa's next hack she's going to show us. Yeah. So my last hack came when I was introduced I need to actually share my screen, not just switch to it. Hang on. Um, when I was introduced to something called Project Evo, and Project Evo is working on um, planning, creating planning pages based on your brain type is what they call it. Uh, again, this is just one more system of personality to think about things, but they are very specifically working on how does your brain work for planning. And so, um, I can't even remember how I figured it out. So they sent out the draft pages and I just want to show you it's sort of a, a bird's eye look at this. Basically the things that are on the same page are there for, for everyone. They just look different and they're in a different order. So these are their categories, Oracle, Explorer, Architect, and Alchemist. And their pages look very different. I'm just going to show you what those pages look like. So you can see that an explorer really needs to be, if they're time-based, they're, they're, yeah, it's just not me, I'm laughing because it's just so foreign. Um, architect is close to what I am. So you see, you notice that on explorer, there are still boxes around things and architect moves toward less boxes and I am an alchemist and there are no boxes on my page except this is what the app, the Evo app uses to scan a particular page down here, this box. Um, so there are dotted lines. And of course, being a bullet journaling person, I went, ooh, I really like some of the things that they do, but I want my own touch on it. I want things to be, look pretty. And I created, um, this. So this is an adaptation of the Alchemist page that I made for myself. And it is my blank daily page. This is an actual rocket book snap of the blank pages and they are worn in. This area right here has lots of wear on it. This area right here that I write on every day has lots of wear on it. And you can tell that it doesn't look like that from the snap. Um, I actually wrote down here on thoughts and ideas one day, remember to snap a blank page so I can stick it in here for you guys. Um, and so I, I love having flags and I changed the gratitude thing to be a flag. These, these uh, hashtags, number signs, whatever you want to call them up here at the top is an indication to rocket book that it's a title. So if I put three hashtags, on either side of text, that text becomes the title of the page. So you don't have to type it in to send it wherever you're sending it. Uh, so what that looks like, here's just a couple of examples of what it looks like filled in. Um, again, you can tell my colors this week are light blue and orange. And then here's another one where my colors are black and black. Um, and what that looks like. So one of my adaptations that I'm particularly proud of, you notice that they put little check boxes here for being done with things. And mine are smiley faces. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am happy with myself that I got those things done that day. That is great. I love that. Uh, so cute. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that title is, um, that's a really good hack too, because, mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, it's like you just put your date up there and it automatically knows that it's a title. So that was a, that was yep. a really uh, nice hack too. I really like that. Now, this is your daily page. So do you erase this and, and do it every day? Every okay. single day. So that's kind of yep. part of your daily routine. Yeah, it's part of my morning. The first thing that I do when I get to work is, you know, take a look at, do I have any scheduled events? Do I have any um, things that I know I have to get done? Um, if you had noticed on my weekly spreads, I always have a most important tasks section. And so I review that every morning to say, is there anything on my task list that I really have to get done today? Um, since I've taken on the accessibility lead for our state agency, what goes on this line every time for most important is accessibility every single time. Um, so it's this blank framework is adaptable for whatever is coming up in my life. If I ever do this on the weekend, accessibility would not be my most important thing, but I typically don't. This is mostly a work mm -hmm. thing for me. And I, you know, that's, that's kind of a neat point too, because um, when I first looked at this, I didn't realize this, you know, it didn't click that this is for work, but it's very fun. It's very um, kind of mm -hmm. light and colorful, and it looks like it would create more, more of a positive uh, feeling for me when I looked at it, as opposed mm -hmm. to looking at just, you know, yucky looking text yeah and this was my excuse to buy colored sharpies <laughs> uh, so this the color that you see on these pages is permanent color so it is sharpie color mm -hmm. um, and so that sharpie color also transfers onto every page yeah it's you know i, I it's really nice I, I like that a lot and um you know one of the things you had mentioned about the boxes on the evo page and mm -hmm. it looks like you don't yeah you don't have any boxes no nope, no boxes yeah you had mentioned that that is a way to influence people's thinking whether or not there's a box around something yeah so there are i am clearly an unstructured person um mm -hmm. boxes and firm edges make me uncomfortable I don't like to say, if I do this, I am done. I always like to leave my options open in the end. Um, and so not having any boxes on this page is just freeing for me. I, I have a choice to change my mind partway through the day. You saw on here that I crossed off. There are some things that I just didn't do and I just felt okay with crossing them off rather than, you know, saying I, uh, especially, like if I look at the Explorer page where they've got morning, afternoon, and evening, I don't want to have to confine myself to these are the tasks I'm going to do in the morning. And then I'm going to do this in the middle of the day. And then I'm going to do this at night when I get home. That just to me, uh, mm. <laughs> so mm. thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a really neat insight too, just for like sort of planning and in, in general, whether you're using paper or Rocketbook or OneNote or, or something mm -hmm. else, just this idea that the structure influences the way that you think and what, even like something simple, like whether or not you have boxes, like I never thought of that until you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. The idea that a box is kind of, um, confining might be the word someone uses if it, if it doesn't feel good to them, but right. it might be, uh, well, I don't know what a more positive version of that word would a comforting, be. Comforting. Comforting. Right? Yeah, that's that good. There, there is a beginning and end to these things that I have to do today. Mm -hmm. It fits nicely into a box. Um, I know people like that and mm -hmm. I appreciate them and I'm not one of them. <laughs> yeah. So I think that even that's like a little, a, a great little tip that came out of this is like just the fact that you can use a box just mm -hmm. to confine things if you want. Cause sometimes, uh, you know, I feel like especially in the modern digital age, things can be very messy and, and sort of complicated and stuff. And, you know, if you can come, you know, make your, make your planner feel comfortable and structured for yourself or supportive, I should say comfortable yep. and supportive. That's great. Yep. Um, yeah, that so Project Evo um, produces physical planners, so you can buy their pages, and then you um, they've got an app that would scan that little box at the bottom of their page, and then do some data analysis for you. Like what was they have a favorite activities category. So if your workflow was really high, what was what's the correlation to the kind of activity that was your favorite activity for the day. Is there some sort of matchup between that? Um, so using their full system, using their paper app, using their phone app provides different additional data, but it's data that I just don't care about. So that's why I did my own thing. Michelle, you're muted.
<laughs> Thank you for that. Sorry, yeah. I was I was taking a drink. Um, I like that you took inspiration from their pages, but as mm -hmm. you mentioned, like it's not a direct copy. It's just Correct. sort of like grabbing what you need. And I I do that as well. Like I love to watch other people's planner videos because sometimes you see something and it's like, oh, I want to try something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. So, um, so I think we have covered just about everything we wanted to cover. We talked about mm -hmm. the sizes. We talked about traveling light. Um, and I, I think we're about ready to wrap up. Let me, if you have any uh, last questions, go ahead and put them in the chat because we are going to wrap it up soon. So um, do you have any final comments for us? I cannot say how much OneNote changed my life when I first got in introduced to it. And then the, the huge advance I took when I found Rocket Books. Um, I just, I don't have to carry a computer with me everywhere I go. It is just a delightful feeling to be able to be free. Um, yeah, I, you know what? I'm actually on the fence about getting a Rocket Book. I was looking at them yesterday because uh, it was Amazon Prime Day. And, um, right. you Prime know, Prime Day's not over. You oh. got a few hours left. <laughs> you know, I just might be, uh, you know, messaging you later saying, hey, I bought my rocket book. Because awesome. um, it also, there. Uh, I think the price for the medium size one on Prime Day was $28. So if you add a pen on top of that, it's not a huge investment for something you can use. Oh, it comes so with they, a pen. Oh, it comes with a pen. Yeah, they come with, they come with a black friction pen. Yeah. Um, so when you saw all of my pens together, that's two separate packs of pens. So the markers come as a set and the ballpoint pens come as a set, but each of those sets is $15 or less. So it's not a huge investment. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had to buy a second set of the um, ballpoint pens because I started running out. Mm -hmm. But I've had my rocket books for, I don't know, almost a year now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, for I think, like I said, the price is twenty eight dollars. So it's like mm -hmm. for twenty eight dollars, you can, you know, get into this new thing and have it forever. So that's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I, I have a few more hours, like you said. <laughs> uh, we do have a final question. Um, Denise wants to know: Is there a way to take a regular piece of paper and turn it into a rocket book page? So, no, not really. Um, the closest thing that works outside of rocket book is Office Lens. Um, Office Lens is also free to download and you can snap a picture of any document, any whiteboard, any business card and send it to any of the Microsoft supported applications. Could you, if you had like a piece of paper, like say like a business card or a post-it mm -hmm. note that was smaller than your Rocketbook page, could you stick it on your uh, Rocketbook page and then, mm -hmm. oh, and snap it with Rocketbook? Yep. Yep. Um, there was one time where somebody gave a a piece of parchment paper as a handout for talking about um, what did parchment actually look like. And so I stuck that piece of parchment on my rocket book and just snapped it with my page. So. Oh, that's so that's pretty cool. I mean, that's a pretty, you know, it's not exactly uh, no. what, what Denise asked, but that's pretty cool. And then Kathy. Uh, just said that the A5 size is part of a Prime Day deal. Twenty three ninety nine inf includes a folio cover. Wow! I might have to get myself another rocket book. <laughs> <laughs> and is A5 the really tiny one, or is that the medium? I well, would assume that that A5 is this size, the middle size. Oh, okay. Wow! Thanks, Kathy. Yeah. Um, okay. So it looks like we're just about wrapping up here. Uh, we don't have any more questions and, um, I think we're good there. And if you do, if you come up with questions later mm -hmm. or you, um, or watching this later, you can, uh, Melissa has said she'll respond to questions. I'll mm -hmm. let her know if you put a question in the comments. So, uh, thank you so much, Melissa, for joining us. Uh, you really knocked it out of the park today. It was awesome. great. Good. It was, you know, just so terrific. You, and you gave us so much more than just Rocketbook and OneNote. Oh, and Kathy has confirmed the A5 is the medium. Denise says, thanks, ladies. Okay. Um, and it was just really, it was my pleasure to have you. So thank you for everything. Thanks for letting me come. I love talking about this stuff. You should ask the people at work how often. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then Sarah, who has her rocket book on the way, says thanks to both of you. This was a huge help. Good. Yeah. Glad you liked it. So if you like today's chat, I would love it if you'd subscribe to my mm -hmm. channel by hitting the subscribe button. And as a subscriber, you'll get notified of future Take Note chats. And I 
do you plan on hosting um, guests from all over the place? So the date and time may change, so it would be good to get notified. So I'm gonna do one more check of the chat. We're great. Every Kathy, Kathy said, great chat. Thank you, Kathy. It was great to have you. And um, that's it. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.